All right, guys, it's a little bit different recording here. I'm actually recording in my home office, not down in the garage in the studio. Um, this is my setup, so I'll go through it sometime, some other time. But um, today I wanted to bring up an image that I shot when I was in Paris with our family. Um, last year, actually, this image is an image that my daughter shot, and I want to bring the best out in it. One way to do that really easily, especially with landscape type photos, is the graduate neutral density filter. I've gone through it before. I'll put a card up above about that. But today I want to show you a couple of tips and tricks with the GND. And uh, let's just hop right in. I'm going to show you how you can bring out color, some different ways to apply it, to apply the actual graduate neutral density filter, and the options that you have as far as using the brush to only hit regions and other things. So let's hop into Lightroom and uh, get right through this. All right, guys, so let's get started here. So I've got this picture that my daughter took while we were in Paris. Uh, we were there last summer. That's when my daughter really started getting into photography. So she came out one morning with me out to Passy Bridge. Uh, we took some sunrise photos of the Eiffel Tower. This is actually one of her images that she shot. I'm going to use this image to show you some things that I do typically on landscape photos with the graduated neutral density filter. So we've used the neutral density filter before, but I've got a couple of tips for you today. I want to show you how to use and apply the filter settings outside of the graduated filter, as well as a couple of clever ways to apply the filter itself, and then what you can do to um, really bring up an image like this. So I'm using this image because this is kind of a non-standard thing we're going to do with the graduated filter. So normally the graduated filter, we would do something like this, like grab it over here. Um, I'm just going to have the exposure way down and we would apply it something like this to make you know, the sky darker and keep the foreground the same color so that they match the exposure. But in this image in particular, the sky actually looks really good. We've got this really nice pink, orange, yellow you know, going to blue, red, um, you know, gradient here going up into this beautiful blue sky, some great clouds, but we've got these really dark trees over here, the whole dark foreground, the dark Eiffel Tower, these dark bushes and buildings here. So instead of bringing a filter down from the top and applying it, we're going to bring it up from the bottom and we're going to use it to increase the exposure on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this exposure way up by four stops. I'm going to show you a couple things that you could do. So you could normally just hold down your mouse button, pull that filter up, right, and apply it. So now we've got this foreground that's four stops. This is way too much exposure, by the way. This isn't what we're doing. And as I'm using the filter, just for a quick review, I've got the handle in the middle. If I grab the top and pull down, the uh, bottom one is going to stay, and the top and the middle are gonna move down and change the way that gradient works. Or if I grab the bottom one, then the bottom in the uh, middle will move, and the top will stay the same. So the exposure up above won't change, and that area that it's applied in will change. One way that I really like to use this filter, especially when we have a, um, a pretty straight horizon like this one is, is that I hold down the Alt or the Option button and start drawing it out so that I get a nice um, line right there where the middle doesn't change and I can just change the top and bottom. So I'm going to show you that right now. We're going to leave the same kind of crazy exposure on and then we'll adjust it later. Okay, so now I'm going to hold down Option I'm going to actually hold down shift because if I just hold down option and apply this, you can see that I can rotate this. But if I hold down shift, then it locks it straight. So a couple of things with the uh, graduated neutral density filter is, or the graduated filter, it's not in here, it's a graduated filter. It's not, I call it graduated neutral density filter coming from photography. But in here, because you can do so many things with it on a graduated scale, it's just a graduated filter. And I'm just going to drag it. Now if I pull down, I'll apply it like a standard uh, graduated filter where the filter settings are applied to the top and graduated down until the bottom when they're not applied. We want to do just the opposite. We want to pull this up because we want to leave the sky and affect the foreground. So with this, because I can tilt this, but I have a straight horizon, so I'm going to hold down shift and just lock this straight. And then I'm going to figure out the gradient here. So with this being a pretty good horizon here and not too much on the horizon, I'm going to keep this pretty tight. So I'm going to pull it in here, and I'm just going to dial that exposure way down. I don't want to make this like crazy or anything. So the base is right about here. We're just going to bring it up by about a stop. So when you hear people talking about a stop or a stop of light, an easy way to think of that is this image was shot at ISO 200. 
if I increase this foreground by a stop, it's as if I shot it at the same aperture, the same shutter speed at ISO 400 as far as the light goes. Okay, so now we've got kind of a base here, right? But we've got some issues. So let's hide this graduated filter. And so this is looking a little bit better here, right? This foreground, it's here's the before, here's the after. So not a huge change, but just enough. You see a little bit here in the sky changing. That doesn't bug me, that's just fine. We still have these really dark trees. We have these really dark trees over here, the really dark bank, and then the really dark Eiffel Tower. So let's open the graduated filter back up. This is where we're living all day long, right here, this in this adjustments uh, brush area. So we've got this open. Now what I wanna do is I wanna select it. When I select that filter, you can see where it's been applied and where it hasn't. So I'm gonna click on brush over here. And what this does is instead of drawing it out in that graduated filter, now I have a brush and wherever I apply that brush, my settings are gonna be applied. So now I can come over here. I have something called auto mask on. So auto mask is going to sample where these crosshairs are on my mouse. And it's going to apply this filter to anything that's similar in tone or color in contrast. And it's going to apply this filter as well. So I wanna color in some of the trees. What I wanna be careful of are these blue areas. I don't wanna hit these and brighten those up. So I really wanna stay in the trees. Then I'm gonna do this whole bank over here. And then I'm gonna do some of the Eiffel Tower. So we'll just do that really quick. So I'll just come in here and paint this in. You can see this brightening up. It's just enough to bring out some detail and we're gonna bring out some detail in some other ways. So right now we're adding you know, about a stop of light through bringing that exposure up by a stop. Good. And now I'm gonna zoom into the Eiffel Tower. Hold down the space bar. If I hold down the space bar, it changes to a hand so I can move around. And I wanna stay on the tower itself and not touch the sky. I'm just gonna bring the tower up some. And what I really want to hit are just these super dark areas so that I'm not really affecting the sky in that area at all. I don't want to get a, um, you know, kind of an outline or a halo around the tower. I'm just going to come right down this strut. All right, let's back out. Let's turn that off. So I've got before. And after, so you can see the light added to the Eiffel Tower. It's subtle, it's not a lot. You can see in the bushes there. So let's bring that brush back. And now let's mess around a little bit. Let's maybe bring some shadows up some. That's good, so we get a little bit more detail out of the tower, a little more there. I might add just a little bit of clarity, not much. Um, I'm not gonna really mess around with sharpness. This is, you know, the good thing about this image is I don't really have to mess around too much with the colors. But being that this is morning, I've brought that exposure up. I want to add just a little bit of blue here. Not much, but just a little bit just to give it this nice cool feeling still. So let's go ahead and take a look now. And I see the before by pressing the backslash key and then press it again, or I can press Y and Y will bring up a view of before and after. So you can see here, this is before and here this is after. So I think that looks pretty good. So here we are bef before, after, not bad. Now one thing that I would do if I was finalizing this image is I would get rid of a couple of things here. I'd get rid of these light trails. This would be really cool if this was all full of light trails, but it's not, so I'd get rid of it. Um, I might do some cleanup on the road, like maybe clean this part up here. So I think the last thing that we can do to this image to really make it kind of pop, but not look crazy, is let's just add a little bit of saturation, maybe a little bit of vibrance. Let's just see how that looks. So right here in the presence, I'm gonna add a little bit of vibrance. So if we go crazy, you see like that, that's not what we want at all. Right, so here's the base um, right there. And we're just gonna add just a little bit. We're gonna bring in a little bit of saturation. That's way too much. We're gonna bring that down about 10, 12. There we go. And now let's look at before. So there's before, there's after. So just a little bit of color. Bring up those shadows a little bit and that's it. So hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, so a couple of keys that we worked on today, mostly the, I mean, the graduated filter. Held down Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac so that we could apply it to where the top and bottom moved, but not the middle. And um, we drew that to ex increase the exposure and the overall settings on the lower part of the picture, the foreground. We increased the brightness using the, using the graduated filter brush so that we can define you know these areas. And actually, let's bring that up really quick. So this way you can see where the brush is applied, you can see the mask. 
So we did that with the brush. And then um, we just bumped the, the contrast and the, I mean the, the vibrance of the saturation over here. This is really almost all that I would do to this image. And I think we've got a great looking image. And I was like, well, like maybe a five to seven minute edit while explaining. So this is literally something that you could do in three to five minutes using nothing but this adjustments panel. By no means was this an exhaustive edit today. What I really want to do is give you more graduated filter tips. There's a lot more that we could do. Hopefully this is uh, something to get you on the path to um, editing your landscape type photos. This is really great for landscape type photos. It's an awesome technique to learn. So if you want to learn anything else, um, hit me up below. Comment, like, subscribe. Got a lot of stuff coming up. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. You keep watching. I'll keep making videos. And I will uh, talk to you soon. Have an awesome day. Thank you.